Though we live in the age of information, not every media source is equal. Information of integrity and inspiration can get lost in the noise of advertising, fake news, and pop science. Where can you go to find the knowledge that could change your life and empower you to live your highest potential? New Society Publishers was originally founded in Philadelphia as a nonprofit. They started as a social movement opposing the war in Vietnam, nuclear weapons, and nuclear power, and publishing pamphlets on peace, civil disobedience, conflict resolution, and social change. Their early books focused on nonviolence, feminism, and alternative economics. After four years of publishing a small quarterly magazine called The New Catalyst, Kip and Judith Plant were looking to reach a larger audience with their activist writing when one of their friends at New Society suggested that they get into book publishing. Uh, my name is Judith Plant. I'm really mostly retired, which is, which is lovely since the company is still in my backyard. My partner Chris and I became, or Kip and I, became very <clears throat> close to uh, the, the collective. And so we're still cranking out the newspaper and I'm doing the book and we're living off grid and, you know, when it gets to be seven below, we have no power whatsoever. So we'd have to put the battery into the car and drive the car around to charge up the battery, bring it back so we can operate our little Osborne computer with us now. So Davis said, you know, you can reach a lot more people through books than you can through um, your magazine. What do you got? 3,000, 4,000 readers. With books, you can get tens of thousands. So why, he said, why don't you try, why don't we try to set you up with the Canadian Office of New Society Publishers. So for the next five or six years, we did just that. And part of that process was moving here because we needed to be able to plug into the grid. We needed a proper telephone uh, if we were going to do this experiment. So okay, we, de we devoted ourselves to that and uh, I moved here and set up a little office and began to learn the business of book publishing. So the Philadelphians taught us everything. And then around 1995, after many years of service, the Philadelphians decided to lay their nonprofit. We were nonprofits at the time. And so, but we were just getting going. Kip and I were just getting going. So we didn't want to stop. stop. So, but we didn't have the money to buy all the inventory and we didn't have the money to buy the company ourselves. And we were, we didn't know what we were going to do. And then out of the blue, literally out of the blue, we, I, we got a phone call from a lawyer in Vancouver who said, uh, we have somebody here who really liked to talk with you. His name is Joel Solomon. He was an angel investor. So that's, the, that's how I got involved. Really. And never really looked back. Kip and Judith, along with help from an angel investor, acquired the company and in the fall of 1996, launched New Society as a for-profit enterprise with a new vision of how to do business. Well, I would love to think that our company is a role model, uh, and, and, and maybe it is. It's not just about profit, but it's about people and place. So it's the three Ps, yeah, the triple bottom line. We're social creatures and we need each other. And the problem with our current society is we're fragmented and alienated from each other and from place. So. That's the foundation. We have a family first policy. So that means that if your father is dying, you go and be with your father. There's no question about that for as long as it takes. So we've definitely had that very scenario. If you need to go to your kid's school to do something, you just go. It's simply what you do. Um, but all the work seems to get done and it really um, empowers everyone to do the best possible job because they're given free reign to do that work. It's always been about family first because they've always believed that um, life comes first, work second. You know, it's not like, okay, you have to work this many hours and if you need to take time off, you can't. It's like they understand if my kid is in a school play or something that like I should go off and see that. The company itself understands that. Well, I've worked for a number of different companies in the past, and what sets New Society apart is it's a sense of being a family. So we really look after each other. We all, it, it turns out we all take our turn uh, in life having a tough time, and we kind of rally for each other. We have our art designer guy down, 
and one of our acquisition editors down, but everybody else just rises to fill in the gaps. Now, maybe that happens at a normal company, but it happens organically here. There's never any question about it. We know people have to take care of themselves and their families before their jobs. In an odd sort of way, that makes them work even more special. I think every time that there is something going on for a team member's family and everyone really comes together to help support that person, um, I'm, I'm so inspired. So we all take care of one another. If there's a problem with one of our family members and we need to go attend to that, uh, there's no issue and everyone's very supportive. We're very much a family and we really support each other. We have long-term employees here, people, you know, people always tend to to come back it's it's a home we're all in here in it for the long haul so even um people who are older don't retire because they like it it's part of their lives well or, you know i don't mean to be trite but we are providing tools uh for people to uh, make the world a better place and that's that's really what do. We, we don't like to publish books that are just dire, that just paint a dire picture. We, we really encourage authors to have a solutions orientation to their, to their, if they set up a problem, try to have some solutions to go with that. A lot of the topics that New Society covers and have historically covered have been at the real sort of cutting edge, um, often published with no clear, knowing that the ideas were important, but not necessarily mainstream, so often with the idea that there was not necessarily a clear market and the commercial viability may, may or may not be there, but that the material demanded to be published. It had to be put out into the world and was important. So there's a lot of risk taking in the publishing in terms of the subject areas and the specific topics of the books. Rapid decision making. I mean, we can decide to take on a book in a five minute conversation, um, whereas quite a lot of publishing it's a very ponderous process of of profit and loss calculations and market assessment and all that and we just sort of rely on some of that but a lot of it on our intuition and a lot of it is driven by our interest as editors and the feedback we get from sales and marketing and other people of what are important ideas that need to be discussed and i, I love the concept meetings when we sit around and, and, and think together this group thinks really well together. So coming up with titles or cover design suggestions or concept meetings are really lively and um, good, connected brain work. And if we think something's important and it needs a book, we champion it and we run with it and invariably we publish it. I really like our concept meetings when we have new books that have come up and we have to sit down as a team. Um, it's a very creative process and it's just really interesting to hear everyone's point of view on the content that is coming through, so um, that's inspiring to me. Everyone has such a great like, ability to talk about the content because it, we all do gardening and we have animals and we can just really relate to what we publish here. So that part of it is really inspiring to me as well that um, we actually walk or talk. I just like knowing that I'm part of of what's happening, of, of the, that we are successfully bringing people the information that, that they need to, to tackle what's going on around them. New Society does more than print high quality books. They are pioneering the business ethics that can change the way our economy and work lives operate. A lot of the publishers who are focused on the similar topics that we're focused on don't necessarily walk the walk. You know, they talk the talk, but they don't do it. So we make sure that um, all of our paper is recycled and we're a B Corp organization. So we try to, we're, our books are about sustainability and then the company itself is trying to be as sustainable as possible. New Society has always been value-driven. The whole company arose out of Chris and Judith trying to change the world and make it a better place, and so that runs through the whole company. And it's also, like when I started working here, I had a bit of business experience. And I'm like, this is the most organically run company. I've never seen, I'm like, there's no business, like, 
what's going on here? I was like, yeah, but it's super successful. And so just shut up and listen, pay attention. It's not a hierarchical st- structure, and I, I really appreciate that part of working here. But it's really important to me that we're employee-owned and that we're B Corp. Um, it's inspiring to work for a company that um, does that, but, but is also very family-oriented. Because everyone is so mission-driven and so self-motivated, it's, there's not like this structure of oversight and yeah, really strong team. And, it, and the team is not, we're going to make a lot of money out of this company. The team is, we're here to make a product that we can put into the hands of people who can make the world a better place. We're, we're the only publisher, certainly in our sector, quite possibly the only publisher in North America that prints exclusively on 100% post-consumer recycled paper. Um, we printed an employee-owned press as well, and the press is located in Manitoba. With that comes um, higher costs. I mean, they're fair wage payer. Um, they have a very tight control in their supply chain. We know where our paper comes from. We know what the inks are made of. We know what the, the waste treatment stream is. When you pick one of our books up off the shelf versus another publisher in a bookstore, for example, those aspects, unless you read the details at the back where we explain it, are um, often invisible to people. And what they go to is the price exclusively. And they'll want to know why one full color book is $5 or $10 more than another full color book. And the, the real reason is it's, it's the externalization of the environmental impact of that other publisher's book. So books that are printed overseas in particular, the wages are significantly lower, but also the, the waste control um, the externalization of, of um, um, the negative outputs of the production. They're not captured in the price. But to the buyer, we're competing on price. We believe that trees have their own story, right? And that's why we print on 100% post-consumer paper. I would explain it about how people are, buy, are turning to buying local food or organic food now. You're doing that because... You know where the food comes from, you know the process it went through to get to your dinner plate, how far it came, um, you know that more money is going to the farmer, you know that it's better for you. Um, so we've been saying lately that our books are so good you could eat them. Um, and so I think that if we look at our food or the clothes you put on your back, we're looking at the labels more about where they were made and you know how the uh, fibers were grown and processed, and we can apply that to so many things in our life. I wish people knew more about the quality of what we're producing, the physical books, and the our efforts to reduce the impact of that as much as possible. Much like people are increasingly aware of the origins of their food that they're eating, or at least some people are, where their food comes from and all the impacts associated with that, it's very similar with books. Eggs and eggs are not necessarily the same thing. One could be from a battery farm and one could be free range organic. And they look the same, but they're not the same. And it's similar with the books. We're carbon neutral. We're one of the few publishers that are. We buy our carbon offsets through a local company. So through our carbon offsets, we're supporting the composting in the city of Vancouver. I think that when you're getting buying a book from us, you're getting more than just a book. That There's a lot of care that has gone into, into that. You can feel good about where your money is going and how it's being spent. And yes, it's a little bit more money, but yes, it's like that organic food or the hemp shirt you've purchased. There's a reason you're paying for a bit more. And if more publishers start printing on recycled paper and in North America, then that also brings the prices down for everybody else. So I think the main thing is to get other people doing it as well. Despite a business culture that puts people and community first, New Society is not immune to the pressures of the publishing industry and the influence of the media giants. Book publishing is such a complex industry, um, you know, and, uh, and of course technology is at the centre of it. It always has been. I'd like us to continue to thrive, but part of that means not burning out. So to find our own level of sustainability, so we have good health, um, happiness and some joy and excitement without uh, without burning out that's really tricky because of the pressures of the industry pressures of the industry are huge we live by what we sell um, and so that's that's a, a constant issue one other challenge is amazon itself they've made book publishing or sales accessible worldwide there's no question about that but that's come at the detriment of two things. One is um, 
largely independent bookstores. I thought actually the closing of the small independent bookstores was pretty bad, when we, because those were the stores that bought our books. Those were the stores that located in communities and neighborhoods with coffee bars and something. That's where our books sold. Well, they just closed, you know, one after another, as Amazon just gobbles up the territory. The days of the general independent bookstore, aside from the big ones, those days are long gone. Um, so they, so in some ways, the bricks and mortar stores have been killed by Amazon. The other thing is Amazon demands very high discounts from publishers, and their sheer size leaves publishers with no negotiating room. So it's not a negotiation as much as Amazon tells you what the discount is, and you take it or leave it. And you can't leave it these days because they are the conduit for so many book sales. They take a massive discount. They take a math, they, because they can, they do. So that puts pressure on prices, pre presents an unrealistic expectation sometimes on people for how much a book should cost. Because when they drive down the price, they'll put a 35, 40% discount on Amazon. That's coming out of somewhere, and where it's coming out of is the publisher, and then also the authors, the author's royalty is impacted. So um, it's hard to tell people not to to buy from the cheapest, most accessible point of sale. Um, and it, you know, we do use those conduits, but it certainly puts pressure on, um, on us as publishers and our authors. Over 50% of our sales go through Amazon. And so you're in this situation where you don't want to drive your readers to Amazon. On the other, on the other hand, we're selling 50% of our books there. We all love a good deal. I love a good deal, <laughs> right? So it is difficult to resist sort of, um, sort of bargain basement prices, especially with how expensive things are today. The sales reps say, you know, what do you look at? You look at the cover, you pick it up, you look at the back, you look for the price tag. And so they, they say that too. Why, why should a customer want to pay more for this? So first of all, people don't often think of their book as a product. They think of it as information. So first we have to educate them that this is a product and things go into the production. One of the biggest differences you can make is vote with your dollar. So every purchase you make, um, you know, if you're giving your money to the big corporations, that's going to continue that cycle. So when you make a choice with the money you spend, I think it speaks volumes. And so we want people to feel good about not just what is in our books, um, about the information you're going to find, but feel good about knowing, you know, that it was printed in North America, that it's on 100% recycled paper, that it's coming from a carbon neutral company, that we're a B corporation and all of these things. This is a book that actually encompasses all my values, not just with the information, but how it's made and that there is a difference. For starters, you're supporting a independent publisher and you're supporting all of us who work here, right? All of these people who have a mission, who, who are trying to do good. But more than that, you are uh, diversifying the industry so that um, authors can still be published, books can still be written, and you're not being controlled by Amazon beginning to dictate content or you know size of book, price of book. By buying directly from the, from the publisher, you're, you're supporting that. New Society in particular, you're helping us push back against the paper industry. I think we're trying to inspire people to work on solutions to help change the world. I think we all, at some point, feel overwhelmed by what's happening in the world, and we don't know what we can do as a singular person to make a change or make a difference. And it can, I think it can make people not try. It's just too much and you shut down and you say, well, nothing I'm going to do is make a difference anyway, so I'm just going to put the blinders on and keep going the way I'm going. I think what New Society is trying to accomplish overall is to give people the tools that they need. And sometimes those tools are real, physical, practical, this is how you do this. And some, sometimes the tools are inspiration and sometimes the tools are more philosophical, political communication. We are definitely focused on helping people, supporting people in their own path to whatever solutions they're seeking. I think sometimes we question our skill set or what we have to offer. 
um, what can I really do? In any profession, you can make a difference in what you're doing. So there's always a new and different way, an innovative and more sustainable way to do something. If we get stuck in that this is how you build a house or this is you have to drive a car. And there's all these alternatives and different ways of doing things. And change doesn't mean loss. It can actually bring more to your life when you do something differently and it can actually be a relief. And I think if, if we share our experiences with each other, it makes it easier for all of us to realize that it, it, it can be done and it's actually fun and exciting. So I think my vision for New Society is just to keep offering people the tools and the vision um, to, to make a different world. I want people to know that there are solutions and that it is okay to I think a lot of us want to do something different, but we don't know what it is and we can't all do everything. So, I mean, we do have a wide range of topics on homesteading, gardening, um, that we have the philosophical side and the how-to side. So there's sort of something for everybody. You make your own kombucha. Like we all start in small steps. Um, and so I think I just um, wish people knew that it's not that hard <laughs> to, do, to do something. If we're going to learn to live in place, how do we do it with different tools? Because if we do it with the same old patriarchal tools, we're just going to recreate the same old, same old. From there, trying to figure out how we can live a sustainable lifestyle based on love and connection. The ideas, I think, still hold firm, even though the experience isn't as smooth and easy as we had hoped 35 years ago. I don't think people know how easy it is to make a change and that we just really want to give them those tools to help them there. We are New Society. We are New Society. We are New Society. We are New Society. Publishers. Publishers. We are New Society Publishers. Please, please, please. Please, 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 please. please. Touch, 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 touch the books. The books. The books. The books. Okay. The books. The books. Please touch the books. <laughs>